Good afternoon, everyone. As we begin, as we begin, we want to take a moment to recognize that we're on Coast Salish territories. We'd like to do that with an honor song that will be led by the team from Chief Seattle Club. If you are able, we'd love to invite you to stand in recognition of the Coast Salish territories that we're on. This is the American Indian Movement song. It's a song of action. It's a song that calls us to remember our most vulnerable and take action on their behalf. So I invite our Chief Seattle Club singers to begin the song. <coughs>
Thank you, Chief Seattle Singers. Way to bring it. A round of applause one more time, please. Whew. That was a lot of energy. Way to go. Well, welcome and thank you. I want to start by thanking the uh, North Haven Senior Living um, for hosting us today. We absolutely look forward to new affordable senior homes in your community. My name is Steve Walker. I'm the director of the Office of Housing. And did I say it? We are super excited to be here. A lot of work goes into getting here. And obviously, a lot of work goes into actually going out and constructing all of this development. But we are happy to be here. Having an affordable home matters. It's the foundation for stability and opportunity for individuals and families. Today, the Office of Housing is pleased to announce over $75 million of investments to create and preserve over 1,400 long-term affordable rental homes across our city. From Northgate to West Seattle to the Central District, Rainier Beach and Belltown, we are taking concrete efforts to make Seattle more affordable. I wish to pause and acknowledge the Office of Housing staff that got us to today, in particular some of my senior leadership team, Lori Olson, Emily Alvarado, and Dan Foley. I'd like to make a special call out, I, I know she's here somewhere, to the Deputy Director of the Office of Housing, Miriam um, Roskin, who keeps our machine running. This significant investment will provide homes for thousands of low-income households for years to come. Seniors, low-wage working people and families, and people experiencing homelessness. These homes help build an infrastructure for equity for our city at large. Affordable housing makes our communities more sustainable, more inclusive, stronger. It connects working people to their jobs and helps others remain in their community in the face of displacement pressure. We know that affordable homes solve homelessness. A portion of today's investments will provide new housing with support services for those experiencing homelessness and for those living with mental illness. We continue to advance proven models to support chronically homeless and move people off our streets. Several of the investments realize on community visions to provide housing integrated with community assets, assets like an art space, a health clinic, and a facility for seniors on Medicaid right here at North Haven. These spaces serve the residents of the buildings and the community at large. In all, we are investing 75 million from the voter approved Seattle housing levy, from the incentive zoning and mandatory housing affordability programs, as well as from a community benefit agreement with the Washington State Convention Center redevelopment. Affordable housing is built through effective partnerships, partnerships with community, the private sector, and all levels of government. I know Senator Frocht is here. I want to recognize you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your commitment. Our mayor has been a champion for access to education. She has proposed and recently passed the Seattle education levy. She championed access to ORCA cards. Today, she is here to announce our annual affordable housing investments, a key way our city builds the foundation for families to access opportunities, for kids to succeed in school, and for workers to live in the city in which they work. Thank you, Mayor, and I welcome you to the podium. Thank you so much, Steve, and thanks again to the Chief Seattle Singers. That was really inspiring, and I particularly liked that it was a song of action. Um, this is really an exciting day. It's exciting to be here at New Haven. Hello and thank you. Come on, you can say hello back. There we go. Um, almost a year ago today, I was able to share some good news and announce that last year we were able to announce $100 million in funding for affordable housing. And over the past year, we've really been able to break ground on many important projects. And I will tell you that seeing the look on people's faces when we actually open a building where people can live, 
whether it's a daycare center, whether it's services, is what tells you what you're doing matters and is important. Today we take another really important step down that path of creating more affordable housing in Seattle. This is the largest one-year increase in affordable housing in Seattle's history. Today, following on what Steve Walker said, we're very proud to announce that this year, the city of Seattle is making a major investment to build and preserve over 1,400 affordable homes to keep Seattle more affordable for all residents. Again, it's the largest increase ever. I, will, I have to stop and thank the people at the Office of Housing who have worked so hard to really see how can we not just get this funding together, but to make it work in the largest array of projects as possible and work with our partners, many of whom are here today, to get additional private funding to the table so that we can increase that amount even more. And with this investment, we will build 10, 10 new buildings with nearly 1,200 apartments total and will preserve nine buildings with nearly 250 apartments. And there's more. This investment will support at least additional $300 million investments from additional public and private sources. So using that investment of $75 million from our housing levy, we're actually able to work with other governments and other private funders to make the total investment um, about $300 million. At a time of significant need in Seattle, we know that working with those people, getting that $300 million will actually increase so that we have totally today announcing there'll be $375 million spent on new affordable housing in the city of Seattle. That's a lot. We know, we know we have more work to do because affordability is, is really one of the most moral challenges of our time. Too many people are going, getting pushed out of Seattle or can't afford to live here. Seniors, people that are, are workers, they are getting more and more difficulty living in Seattle. Right now, if you take what we added last year, where we were able to increase that 100 million to almost 325 million, Seattle in two years, just two years is moving forward with more than $710 million in affordable housing. That's astonishing. To <laughs> and who we also have to thank are the voters of Seattle because they committed themselves to the housing levy that made this possible. The voters of Seattle said, we will tax ourselves for the future to provide for those people who don't have and to make sure that we move forward in, as a city that really believes in and take care of people who are sometimes on the margin, who work hard but can't be here. Those are who we're creating these houses for. One of the biggest challenges that we face today is making sure that we have home stability for our neighbors. These investments will also provide more buildings right now to house the people who are experiencing homelessness. We also, good news, are going to be providing 85 apartments for seniors. The, the seniors, if you look across Seattle, are in one of those places that is most unaffordable for seniors who have done what they needed their whole life, who almost always are living on fixed incomes, and who are trying to make things work and last. It's getting harder and harder for seniors to live in our city, and more and more people are moving into those senior ranks, including your mayor. Uh, <laughs> These, one of these buildings will, as, as Steve said, have a program for inclusive care for elderly. Seniors living on Medicaid will be able to access health care right in the buildings where they live, as well as social services. We also are very mindful that as we grow as a city, it is disproportionately impacting communities of color and our native communities. They are being pushed out and having the hardest time making ends meet. I'm very proud that one of the programs that we're going to be today will, pr will be providing 95 family-focused homes in the Central District of Seattle, which needs those homes. I really want to thank again my team at the Office of Housing, as well as the other people across city government who've been trying to get more innovative about how we can provide more housing as quickly as possible and look for an array of housings. You also notice that we are building things throughout the city. 
because what I have heard where I go is we need affordable housing in every part of this city. And we need that housing to be open to a full range of people. If we want this city to be that city of the future that is welcoming, that is inclusive, and that shows the nation the model of who you can be and what you can represent as a city, we have to double our efforts for affordable housing. We have to make sure it's in every part of our city, and we have to make sure those doors are kicked open for everybody in our city. I want to say that I'm also very proud of the work we've done on the Mandatory Housing Affordability Act. Because of the way that is working, some of the money we have today comes right from that program. It will make our city more affordable, and I'm glad that we got the court ruling we did so we can continue to pursue smart growth that can also help pay for affordability. I also want to say that we as a region have to stand together and advocate for more affordable housing in every part of Western Washington and every part of this state. Housing is becoming a crisis everywhere. And we need to make sure that everyone knows there is a stable future for them, not just in Seattle, but in our region. We also have to pay particular care to those groups and individuals who are serving the communities who have been marginalized the most, who have the hardest time being included in society, and who disproportionately are represented in people experiencing homelessness. I'm now going to introduce one of the people who is a champion on that regard. You saw her briefly up here before, but that's Colleen Echohawk, who is the executive director at the Chief Seattle Club. She'll tell you a little bit about her vision for that. Are you supposed to introduce her, Steve? Is that you making the move? <laughs> um, <laughs> I will tell you that of, of, I have had the opportunity now to meet, with, to meet and work with Colleen over the last year in a whole range of things. There is nobody more committed to a just and equitable Seattle, more committed to the people of the Native community, but also committed to Seattle and the whole community to make sure we get this right. So Colleen, talk to us about your vision. Thanks for all you're doing. I'm just thrilled to be here, and as I began, I wanted to thank the Chief Seattle Club um, team who's here today, including some of our board members who are just so amazing, who fiercely, fiercely um, are advocating on behalf of our homeless Native community. So thank you. I lift my hands to you. You guys are so amazing. I also want to thank, um, yeah, give my round of applause. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank Beacon Development, who's here, who's gotten us this place. You guys have just been such amazing people to us, and to the Office of Housing, who we met um, maybe two or three years, two years ago to think about this project and have just walked with us every step of the way. We're so grateful. And lastly, I want to thank uh, Mayor Durkin, who has been a champion for the Native community. I was, I was reflecting, knowing your history, that I don't think we've ever had a mayor um, in Seattle prior to colonization in this territory um, <laughs> who understands the Native community as well as Mayor Durkin does. And I cannot wait to see what the future is going to look like because I know that you understand our story. And our story for the Native community really begins um, in 1491, when we had a 100% success rate in housing our people, <laughs> and then something happened. <laughs> and now we know that in this region, um, that one out of every 35 Native people will be homeless. That we are seven times more likely to be homeless than any other population in our region. And you know, this is something that has been burned deep into me and to my team. That's why we work so hard every single day. And I'm so happy with our project that has been funded by the office or by the City of Seattle and the Office of Housing. We know that with this project, we're going to be able to offer culturally appropriate services, that our services will be rooted in who we are as Native people, that we will remember that we are on Native ground, that we are in Coast Salish territory. We know that with our services, it will offer um, a, a clinic that will be in partnership with the Seattle Indian Health Board. We'll be able to offer medical services that make sense to the Native community, that is outside of the Western system, that has scarred many of our community. We're excited about the opportunity to offer services that will make our, our community feel at home. That when you walk into our new building that you will see from the inside out that it is in a native space. That it's a place for native community to come together and to remember that we have a part to play in this city. That we have things that we want to offer to all of you and if we can get people inside, get them stable, get them feeling like they know how important they are. 
we are going to see some amazing things happen, not just for the Native community, but for all of Seattle. So I want to thank you, and in the Coast Salish tradition, raise my hands to all of you for the amazing work that is being done, um, not just for the Native community, but for all of our, of our huge city that needs our love and support, because truly, that is what housing is about. Housing is about offering love. It's about saying you are important, you belong inside, and that's what we're gonna do this project. So thank you so much. We cannot wait for you to all be there at the ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot. And I'd love to um, welcome Gwen. I just got so excited. We're gonna welcome Gwen um, from North Haven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful opening song, and um, thank you. And uh, it's just a, a gentle but forceful and meaningful reminder that we are on native land. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Gwen Tara Anderson. I live here at North Haven. And, you know, I'm just basically here to share that caring, compassionate, thoughtful, and sensitive senior living is alive and well in Seattle. <laughs> to all of you. I've seen the courtesy and the dignity with which seniors are treated in this community, and I have been just really moved to experience that wonderful feeling of, of being respected as a senior. I'm delighted to know that there will be more opportunities for seniors to live in a setting where their independence is respected and where they will know that in our youth-oriented society, they not only matter but are honored for their contribu contributions to our greater world. I'm so grateful to be just a small part of the community of North Haven, where senior citizens are valued just for being who they are. Elders, beautiful elders, whose years of living and giving in this world are acknowledged and appreciated. We are a family here with the issues that arise in any family, like any family on the planet, do occasionally rise and do occasionally come front and center. My experience is that when those issues that do need to be addressed surface, they are handled with kindness and respect. So first, I want to recognize the two people who actively and eagerly promoted the benefits of living at North Haven when I shared with them my desire to move into a setting where there would be independent living and, and a variety of activities and, and where my privacy, which is hugely important to me, uh, would be honored also. These two people, I'm going to mention you by name. I know this, you weren't expecting <laughs> this, but Kathy and Robert Oberg, where are you? Where are you guys? <laughs> Thank you for your guidance. Really, really appreciate it. You know, there are no two people here alike. We come to North Haven with different cultural and ethnic backgrounds and experiences, different religious or spiritual practices and traditions. There are differences in sexual orientation. And among the almost 200 people here who live here, you'll find a vast variety of professional backgrounds. So just one last story, because I know I, uh, I, I was only given two minutes, right? <laughs> you take uh, all the time you want. <laughs> I, I think it was the second day I was here, and I, I'd fallen asleep, exhausted from the moving in process. And 
I was awakened. I'm, I'm a very light sleeper. I, w I was awakened by the softest knock on my door. And when I got up and I stumbled over, I opened it and there stood a woman with the kindest face and the most gentle energy imaginable. I'm the floor monitor, she said, and if you need anything or have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm going to say it, Marjorie, it was you. <laughs> it was Marjorie. <laughs> You know, and and that that meant so much to me. Um, I I I really have to honestly say that I, I felt like like North Haven had sent a representative angel to to embrace me and welcome me into the family. Everyone in his or her unique way is special here at North Haven, and I I I am I feel privileged to be here. So one last, last, last point, I promise, that matters a great deal to me. Some of you who live here have met, um, who I'm about to, to mention here. North Haven is animal friendly, four-legged friendly. <laughs> and some of you have met my little Emma Joy, my, my ferocious chihuahua. <laughs> uh, so, so I appreciate that, that our four-leggeds are treasured as well. You know, this is a good place, and, and I'm so grateful to you and to your team and, and to everyone who has had a, an active role in, in making even more good places like this. It's a privilege to speak of its worth and its importance to our city. I'm excited about the expansion and as, as others have said, it is so needed here in Seattle. We are blessed, we are all blessed to be a part of the process. Thank you. I know there should be, there might be some questions. I wanna thank you for those words. And I think it spells out for all of us, um, particularly this time of year at the holidays, the end of the year, we should grab those glimmers of hope and community and love and take them and elevate them. So thank you for all you talk about. I, I'm reminded that one of the first days I was mayor, I had a group of very young children in to see me. I think they were first or second graders. And we talked, and then I said, is there any questions? And this one girl raised her hand. And I said, what? What do you have? And she said in this very high-pitched voice, so what exactly have you done to save the world today? <laughs> and I can tell you now today I have an answer to that. <laughs> this is one thing we're doing together to save the world. <laughs> any questions? Mayor, a uh, quick question about the Mercer Mega Block, because a lot of people see that as an opportunity for affordable housing. Uh, are you committed to, to making an opportunity out of that or and not missing one? Absolutely. It's going to provide a, a, a very, very significant opportunity, I think, for our city. Um, and I think moving forward, there's more to come on that. As you know, there was an executive session today. We're in the process still of reviewing offers that, under the rules of those offers, we can't talk about all of them. But my, my North Star on it has a couple of points to it. Number one is we have to move the needle on affordability. And two, we have to make decisions not just for today, but to the future generations of Seattle. And so I, I, I'm very excited about the potentials we have on that when we finally get it done to be able to work, talk to the community about it, to work with council. Um, but that's really what we're doing now on each one of the parcels we have that are public property we're evaluating how can that, this property move us closer to our goals of affordability. Um, we, we rolled out a couple weeks ago, I think all of you know, the K Block Project, as it's called, where we have the trifecta. We're going to be able to develop um, housing for the homeless, and I saw Plymouth here, there you are in the back, thank you for your work on that. 
We're going to have affordable art space in the first floor of it, and it's going to be built under our community work agreement, so there is a labor contract, so we make sure that the working men and women of this region continue to have those good working jobs. So we're going to look at everything we do in the city through the lens of how do we advance our equity today and for the next generation. Okay. Nothing but good news today. Thank you very much, and thank you to the, the community of North Haven for your welcomeness, um, and also for everything you do in this community and throughout, not just now, but for your whole lives in making us a better city. So thank you very much. Steve? Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> that, that concludes our, our formal uh, agenda and program. I want to thank Colleen and Gwen and, of course, the Mayor. I know that we have boards over here that gives you a sense uh, visually of what these eventual projects will look like and the project sponsors are there to ask and answer uh, questions that you have, uh, an opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, let's go build some housing. And do look at this housing, it's awesome. Um, and all these people in this room have brought it to bear. So thank you to everybody. <laughs>